In this video we will be discussing is Ruby on Rails dead in 2021? So this is something that's come up several times in the posts I've made or in the videos I've made on YouTube. Someone will leave a comment asking if Ruby on Rails is dead. And in the beginning when I got these comments, it used to annoy me a little bit because I'm putting all this work in to create content and someone comes along and asks me if the project is dead. So obviously if I thought Ruby on Rails was dead, I wouldn't be creating content for it on YouTube. But that being said, I wanted to create a video that talked a little bit about this in more detail because the answer is not quite as easy as it first seems. So one of the things we need to consider when we ask this question, is Ruby on Rails dead, is what are they referring to? So when someone asks you this question, what are they referring to? So first of all, the reason that most people think Ruby on Rails is dead is due to the fact that there are not so many people talking about Ruby on Rails anymore. And you'll notice this on YouTube, if you search for Ruby on Rails, it is mostly the same creators over and over again. And in fact, that the videos being created in this space is so few compared to some of the other spaces like uh, Python or JavaScript or some of the other languages out there. So Ruby on Rails is still around and it's still being updated. So there is still a good presence for Ruby on Rails. There is people behind it who really support it and believe in it. The second reason that many people say Ruby on Rails is dead is because the job market is not quite as big as it was compared to back in 2012, 2011. So back then there was a lot of Ruby on Rails jobs on the market. And nowadays there's not quite so many, but there are still jobs out there. I still see them popping up on Stack Overflow when I'm on there occasionally. For me personally, I mostly do freelance work. So in the past, I would normally do my freelance work in PHP or in JavaScript, but over the past few years, I've moved into doing freelance Ruby on Rails work, and I only take on a few projects at a time. I try not to overload myself, but I can tell you there are still people out there looking to hire Ruby on Rails developers. And I get emails about this quite frequently since I created content on my channel. So I'm gonna give you a quick example of how the search volume has appeared for Ruby on Rails in comparison to some of the other platforms out there. So if we look over on vidIQ, we can see that the searches for Ruby on Rails is much, much less than those for Python, for example. So if you're on Python, you're probably using Django for web development. Now, Python has a lot more traffic than Ruby on Rails. And generally Python would be used for machine learning and AI, but people also use it for web development and server side programming. And the fact is that most of the things that you can do in Python can also be done in Ruby. You can also write server side scripts in Ruby that do pretty much everything you will do in Python. But the difference really is when it comes down to AI or machine learning, then Python is a better option for those things. But when it comes to web development or web app development specifically, then I think that Ruby on Rails is still a fantastic choice in 2021. And due to the fact that Ruby on Rails makes it really quick and flexible to make updates and changes to your application, I still recommend it for anyone at the early stage of their startup who wants to build a product or a service or a SaaS application, then Ruby on Rails is a fantastic choice. It gives you so much flexibility and it saves you a lot of time when you are building your application. One thing I would say about learning Ruby on Rails is that for me personally, when I learned Rails, I already had a strong knowledge of JavaScript. I had been working for several years as a front-end developer using JavaScript, SAS, CSS. And at that time, we were using dependency management tools like Gulp, Node Package Manager. So I already had that experience using JavaScript. And it would have been an easy option for me to just move into Node.js and use it on the back end. But when I discovered Ruby on Rails, at that point, I had already used JavaScript. I had already been freelancing for several years with PHP, building many different websites and platforms and applications. And I found that when I switched to Ruby on Rails, things just got really fast for me. I just could build things really quickly, bigger applications that normally would have taken me weeks, I could do it in days. So for me, that was a key reason why I stuck with Rails and didn't just keep chasing the newest technology. I can say that Ruby on Rails is not the newest technology out there. It's been out for like 16 years now, but the thing to note is that you shouldn't always be chasing the new shiny thing. You should be looking at the long term. What can you use to build the best product, to give the best service to your customers or your clients? And ultimately, what will make your life easier? What will save you time? So these are the reasons I use Ruby on Rails, but I would definitely say that it has matured over the years. And the difference between the new version of Ruby on Rails, so that's Ruby on Rails 6, and the Ruby on Rails versions 2 or 3, 
The difference is quite substantial when you look back at it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you learn Ruby on Rails in 2021? Have you been using it for some time or are you looking at other frameworks and other languages? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you all in the next video.